many people can say they've actually been to the land of Oz. It's every child's dream, but I'm about to take you there, and we're going to be transported in, get this, a bubble. So follow me, we're about to go. What better way to get a backstage glimpse at the Bushnell than from high above the stage? Ever since the original 1939 film, Glinda the Good Witch has always arrived in style inside her magic bubble. I am a witch. I'm Glinda, the Witch of the North. You are? And in the musical Wicked, Glinda's bubble is one of the highlights of the notoriously gravity-defying production. Oh, you can call me Glinda. <laughs> Out on the stage, head carpenter Lavoid McKibben presented me with the magic wand. So this is for me? This is for you, Helen. The crew's going to let me ride in the bubble just like Glinda does in the musical's opening act. And who better to give me a few pointers than Glinda herself? So uh, this is the bubble, the famous bubble. She's played by the bubbly and adorable Amanda Jane Cooper. At just 22, the actress says she used to think she was up for anything until this. So I, I was not afraid of heights, but then I got in the bubble and for the first time, and it was, it was a little scary. And she warns me soapy bubbles shoot out when it's moving, which can be a problem. Well, you're singing, so you just kind of have to avoid it. There was one time where I, a bubble was coming right from my mouth, and I just did a little, like, oh, blew it away. The Pittsburgh native says the key to playing Glinda, a seemingly self-absorbed sprite who turns out to have much more depth beyond the surface, is all about perfectly timed one-liners. So you're going to say, it's good to see me, isn't it? And then it's time for me to take a stab at it. Ta-da! Here I go. To my relief, Lavoid and the crew hook me into a harness, which is usually hidden under Glinda's costumes, and with the push of a button, we have liftoff. It's exciting. This is exciting. It's like being in an elevator. All of a sudden, I'm suspended 25 feet in the air, floating. It's the best view in the house. Below, the munchkins, rather the crew, decide it's time for me to make my theatrical debut and feed me my line. Good to see me, isn't it? Yes! Oh, no need to applaud. That was rhetorical. Okay, so I'm not ready for primetime theater yet. Thank you, thank you. Still, a girl can dream. All right, Glenda, well, it has been such a pleasure. Any parting words? Oh, just thank you so much for joining me in this bubblicious experience. And yeah, thank you. And I'm gonna take this home now, right? Wow. I can keep it, right? Actually, uh, bye. I so. Nice to see you. I nice to meet you. No, nope. it's Mine. one of my main props. I need it. Okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Well, it's been so much fun. I'd like to thank the cast and crew of Wicked for letting me tag along today. But unfortunately, I guess it's time to get back to doing that thing called the news that's kind of important. So back to being an anchor now. Here we go. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. The land of Oz, Heather Hedges, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. In another installment of The Real Deal, Your Guide to the Movies, we are checking out a film now shot entirely in Guilford and North Haven High School called The Green. And exclusively with us now is the writer and co-producer, Paul Maccarelli. Paul, we really appreciate you giving us this exclusive uh, interview just two days before the movie release. Well, I'm really excited to be here. Well, yeah. thanks for coming in and more on the release in a minute. But first, I wanted to say if Paul looks familiar to you, that's because he is the star of one of the most infamous commercials in television history. Paul, can I get you to say, can you hear me now? Listen, I get paid a lot of money to say that. But <laughs> just it, once. Just I'll, do it I'll, once I'll, for us, I'll please. I'll do it once just for you. Heather. Okay. Can you hear me now? See, so, I know, so it's convincing. Like magic, I know. <laughs> He's the star of those Verizon <laughs> commercials, so if he looks familiar to you, that's why. Well, Paul actually grew up in Guilford, and he shot this film there. What was it like shooting this movie in your hometown, at your home high school, and you did it in, what, something like 17 days yeah, in record we, we, time? Yeah, we shot the whole film in 17 days. It was actually an amazing experience. You know, when we first uh, conceived the idea for the film, uh, it was supposed to be shot in um, a small college town. And, um, you know, I spend a lot of time sort of walking around uh, the Guilford shoreline, and I just couldn't imagine setting it anyplace else. And uh, it looks absolutely beautiful on screen. Everywhere we go with the film, people ask, where did you shoot this? Where did you shoot this? Uh -huh. And I get to say, oh, it's my hometown. That's Guilford. great. What well, great yeah. publicity for Connecticut. Yeah. Well, the movie is about uh, two male partners, their mm -hmm. relationship, and also what happens when one of them is uh, 
accused of some wrong, wrongdoing at a high school, at right. North Haven High School, well, correct? That, well, that's correct. It's actually, I mean, it's set in a fictional town called Milton, Connecticut. So although we did shoot in the high school that I graduated from. You didn't call uh, it North Haven. It, it was okay. not. It's, 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 it doubles for a uh, uh, very sort of elite prep school. Um, and they, you know, really rolled out the red carpet for us. It was pretty amazing. That's but pretty the, cool. the, the film is a suspenseful drama about a gay teacher that's wrongly accused of misconduct with one of his students and all of the fallout that happens as a result in their small town. And we actually have a clip here that I'll set up for you. Um, the uh, investigation that results uh, from the uh, accusation actually starts to undermine the relationship that this uh, long-term uh, couple uh, experiences. So maybe we can watch the clip. For what, for some novel that's never going to happen? I drag you here. You packed the boxes and drove the truck. I have, I have done my best to make a life for us. I have loved you. I have trusted you. I have stood up for you. And I don't get to hear you say once and for all that nothing happened between you and Jason. No, you don't. Because if you have to ask, that means that you believe them. And I can't take that right now. Wow. What a dramatic clip that you picked there. And I wanted to talk about some of the big names you were able to get to star in this movie, including who we didn't see there, Ileana Douglas, who also happens to be a Connecticut native. That's, that's right. Tell that's me about right. the cast. Well, um, it stars uh, Cheyenne Jackson, who your audiences might recognize from 30 Rock and Glee. Yep. And uh, Jason Butler Harner, who plays the teacher who is at the center of this accusation. Um, audiences might recognize him from Changeling with Angelina Jolie, the Clint Eastwood film. Wow. Um, we Was it also difficult to get them to star in this movie? Listen, you know, actors will work for considerably less than what they're accustomed to working for if they really believe in the project, and we were really lucky. We also got Julia Ormond, yep. who plays the lawyer who defends the teacher. Um, she left our set and three days later won the Emmy for Temple Grandin this wow. year. So we were just, we, we were blessed with this cast, you know, really, really, really lucky. Well, I'm excited to see it. So Tuesday it comes out. Tell us where mm -hmm. we can catch it Tuesday. Well, Tuesday, October 18th, it's available through Cable Video On Demand. Um, so if you have Comcast, of course you can get it on Comcast, iTunes, Amazon, and pretty much anywhere you watch movies at home. Awesome. And it's also available through the Connecticut Film Festival where we were winner of the best feature film this year, which I'm very excited about. They have an encore presentation at Bethel Cinema. Um, this which will Wednesday. Be this Wednesday That's at right. 7 p.m. Got it. And then uh, next month, it's going to be playing in Old Saybrook, too, if that's a little closer for you at the Cape. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, we want to say good luck to you. Thanks Thank so, you so much, much for coming in uh, just a couple of days before it comes out. I'm happy to be here. Thanks And for it's so me. great to see a Connecticut native doing good things. This weekend in Connecticut, you have heard of Star Trek conventions and Comic-Con. But the latest big thing is the Twilight Convention. And today, Harford plays host of the convention for so-called Twi-Hard fans. Joining me live in our studios exclusively this morning, two of the stars of the movie series, Tinsel Corey, who plays Emily, and Boo Boo Stewart, who plays Seth Clearwater. You can catch them next. <laughs> in the finale of the Twilight series, Breaking Dawn, everyone is talking about it. This is Entertainment Week. It's not coming out until the fall, but everybody wants to know about Breaking Dawn, and also folks want to know how they can meet you guys today. Let's start with Boo Boo. You play Seth Queer Clearwater in the series. <laughs> so your character, you helped to guard Bella from the vampires. Yes, I did. Uh, and your character is developed a little bit more in Breaking Dawn in the final, in the finale to the series. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect for your character <laughs> in the new movie. <laughs> Thank you. We've got a little clip here too to, to help you out while you get the giggles out. We've yes, got a clip play, here um, of, of your character as yeah. well. I play Seth Clearwater. He um, he's actually like the only uh, shapeshifter that wants everyone to get along. All the other shapeshifters just want to be in their own group and don't like the vampires and everything, but um, my character's the only character that wants everyone to get along and just to be friends and happy, so. Trying to promote peace within the vampires yes. and the werewolves. Yeah. All right, so can you tell us a little bit more about what to expect for your character for Breaking Dawn? Um, I can't tell you a lot, but I can tell you that um, you're definitely gonna see him more throughout the films. Uh, you're gonna see how his relationship grows with Edward, because uh, they actually become friends, and that's one of the, he's one of his like best friends, so. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's a, a little bit of a tease. Yeah, okay. but I can't say too much, though. Right, so. I understand. That was a lot of detail. 
<laughs> you're going to get in trouble. I'm sure you've signed many contracts saying you're not going to disclose anything. <laughs> Tinsel Corey plays Emily, and you may recall she plays the beautiful fiance of the head of the Native American tribe that is actually a pack of werewolves. We f figure out later on. But one of the hints that they're werewolves is that you have a beautiful scar on your face in the movie Eclipse. Tell us about your character. Is that a good yeah, summary? Um, um, yeah, kind of um, basically like Emily the, um, is engaged to Sam, who is the leader of the wolf pack. And the first time that he turns into a wolf, he can't really control those emotions, so he scars the right side of my face. I have a big scar um, throughout the whole entire movie. And I'm sort of like the den mother. I take care of everybody. There I am. Um, just make sure they're fed, you know, kept in line and stuff like that. You beat out, what, 800 other actresses for that role? Yeah, apparently over 800. Pretty amazing. <laughs> what was it like to be cast in this phenomenon hit teenage series? I mean, I never think about, like, how many people audition or, like, the magnitude of it, you just kind of like go on the ride, which has like been a beautiful experience. And like us as castmates, we all get along, so that's awesome. Yeah, what has been so amazing about the ride? What have been some of the highlights of playing Emily for you? I think like just meeting like the fans, like I think that's a big um, highlight about the franchise. Um, and also like I've grown personally from playing Emily. Like she has so much strength, even though she has like this big scar on her face. It's like she's beautiful no matter what. And like I think her inside radiates, you know. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that as women. In, like we should appreciate more so I've grown um, just playing her yeah like you said she's kind of the rock for yeah. that pack of werewolves yeah and she helps to to their side to help them band together yeah totally. and so what's up next for her character in the next series um, the next I, movie? well let me just tell you everything <laughs> all um, right give us the goods <laughs> you heard it here first um, basically what I can say is sort of um, well Sam used to actually date Leah, which was my cousin, or is my cousin, and... She's my um, sister. Yeah. <laughs> Big it. love like triangle. like a soap opera. It's totally a wolf a pack family opera. tree to try to <laughs> keep every track of everybody, huh? And so in Breaking Down, you kind of see um, the pain that Leah goes through, sort of um, watching me and Sam be, like, obnoxiously in love. So you, you see a little bit more of that. Okay, so another romance developing besides <laughs> Bella and Jacob. Okay, and tell us a little bit more about the, the convention. What is it like being part of a Twilight convention? I, I know that this is the first time it's been in Hartford, but you guys have been to these around the country. Mm -hmm. It must be just thousands of screaming fans, huh? Uh, it's, it's been fun. Like, just the fans are so supportive of coming out and seeing us. And, uh, yeah, today we're doing it. And it's, it's just really cool. You get to see the costume contest, which is always fun. I was going to say, while well, you were doing... Uh, some people try and do the scar on her face, like redo <laughs> to the come scar. support Emily. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I've seen that a couple times, which I, th I thought was cool. Well, I have to give you a little bit of a hard time, boo boo. But I understand a lot of girls come for you. <laughs> they I do. understand you have they quite scream. a teenage girl following. Yeah. They throw panties at him. It's no. crazy. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, we, you know, we went online, and you have a huge following oh, of thanks. girl Thank fans you. mainly. Um. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. And both of you are also um, interested aspiring musicians as well, singers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm actually doing uh, something with my sister, Favel Stewart. I think she should be like, she should be recording while I'm gone. So. Okay. And Tinsel, I know that you also have a single. That's yeah, out right I now. just released my first single. I've sort of done music um, and acting hand in hand, but this is the first time I'm able to focus on music. So it's called Letter. It's on iTunes right now, and I'm really excited. It's sort of like bluesy, rocky jazz, and people say my voice is wow, sort of like neat. Nora Jones. Well, if you're interested really in meeting good. them, they'll be at the Hartford Hilton today through 6 o'clock tonight. We want to thank you for joining us. We'll have more information on our blog there. Hope you have a great Sunday, everyone.